A six sided die is rolled twice randomly. The two resulting numbers are observed. Find the probability mass function of the following. The first, the maximum of the two numbers. Now, let x1, x2 be the two numbers that we observe. And we want to find the probability mass function of the maximum of x1 and x2. And let's call this maximum y, OK? So first, let's figure out the range of y, or the possible values of y. Because x1 and x2, each ranges from 1 to 6. And it's easy to see that the maximum for the two numbers is also from 1 to 6. So to compute the probability mass function, uh, we want to compute the probability y is equal to k for any k belongs to the range of y. Now let's just let's do it in two different ways. Um, the first the first way is simple, but it's tedious. Uh, let's say we want to compute the probability y is equal to three, right? Just one example. Now. If the, if the maximum of the two is a three, so what are the possible values of x1 and x2? So let's see, x1, x2. So let's, for example, if x1 is a three, x2 is one, then the maximum would be three. And three and two also works, then we can also have a three, three, um, let's say uh, one, three, two, three, right? So all these five combinations work. These are all the possible values of x1 and x2, such that the maximum of the two number is three. Now, how many combinations of x1 and x2 in total? Because x1 can take six values, x2 can also take any of the six values. So the total number of combination of x1 and x2 is 36. So there are 36 different combinations of x1 and x2. And out of these 36 combinations, five of them have a maximum value of three. So the probability y is equal to three is equal to five over 36. Okay, now let's try a different way. So suppose instead of calculating probability that y is equal to three, we're gonna first calculate the probability y is less than or equal to three. So this is equal to the probability, the maximum of x1 and x2 is less than or equal to 3. And this is equal to probability x1 is less than or equal to 3, and x2 is also less than or equal to 3. Why is this true? Because if the maximum of the two numbers is less than or equal to 3, each individual ones must be less than or equal to 3. And conversely, if each individual x1 and x2 are less than 3, then the maximum of them are also less than or equal to three. So these two events are equivalent, right? So now this is equal to the probability x1 is less than or equal to three times probability x2 is less than or equal to three. This is because x1 and x2 are independent. So this is equal to three over six times three over six. So because there are six numbers, so the probability that a row is less than or equal to three is equal to three over six. Now, similarly, we can compute the probability y is less than or equal to 2. And this is equal to, similarly, this is equal to x1 is less than or equal to 2 times probability x2 is less than or equal to 2. So this is equal to 2 over 6 times 2 over 6. Now, let's calculate the probability that y is equal to 3. And this is equal to the probability y is less than or equal to 3 subtract probability y is less than or equal to 2. Why is this true? Because we want to compute the probability y is equal to 3. Now first we calculate the y, the probability y is all the way to 3. Then we subtract the probability y, it's all the way up to 2. So what we are left with then is the probability y is equal to 3. Now this is equal to 3 over 6 times 3 over 6, because we just calculate this item here which is equal to this one. So this subtract <coughs> two over six times two over six, right? So minus, so this is equal to five over 36. You see this number 
and this number are the same. These are two different ways of calculating this. Um, let's look at the second question. The sum of the two numbers, so uh, let's compute. So we that's y equal to x1 plus x2. We want to find the probability mass function of x1 plus x2. Again, let's first figure out the range of y or the possible values of y. Now, because x1, x2 is from 1 to 6, so the summation can be 2, 3, and all the way to 12, right? Again, we want to compute the probability y is equal to k for any k that's in this range. Let's take an example. Suppose we want to compute the probability y is equal to 8. Now, let's figure out what possible value for x1 and x2. So first, can x1 be 1? No, because if x1 is 1, x2 must be 7, but we know that x2 cannot be 7 because the die can only be, the result of a of row can only be um, 6, uh, up to 6. So if x1 is 2, then x2 must be 6. If x1 is 3, x2 must be 5. So we have 4, 4, 5, 3, and 6, 2. So these are all the possible combinations of x1, x2, such that the summation of the two numbers is 8. Again, there are a total of 6 times 6 equal to 36 combinations of x1, x2. Out of these 36 combinations, 5 of them has a summation of 8. So this is equal to 5 over 36. Uh, using the same same argument, we can compute the probability of y equal to any other numbers that's in this range. We won't do all the calculations, but you get the idea. Thank you for watching.